Hi there, in this video we're going to look at Cartoon Animator's G2 Legacy Characters and why you'll probably never use them even though they're the greatest 2D character rig of all time. Hi there, my name's David Arundel, otherwise known as The Extraordinary Tourist and sometimes known as The Lazy Animator. And in my previous couple of videos I've looked at Cartoon Animator's G1 characters and G3 characters. So I thought we'd do the complete set and have a look at G2 characters in this video and see whether you can still use them with Cartoon Animator 5 and what you need to know if you are going to do that. So what are G2 legacy characters? Well the easiest way to describe them is just to show you what made them unique and different from the original G1 characters and G3 characters. So here on the screen I've got the one of the G2 dummy actors that you got for free when these were released with uh, Cartoon Animator 2 which was then known as Crazy Talk Animator 2. And these characters were mostly flash based vector characters although you could import raster based sprites into the rig but they were generally designed as vector characters. The main unique feature is that you could spin them round a full 360 degrees. So I'm just pressing the square bracket keys on my keyboard. You can see I'm spinning her around through, I think it has, actually has 10 angles. So we can go either way. And there is a top and a bottom view that you can look at as well. And I'll show you that when we get into the character composer. But essentially... It was a 360 degree character that was able to accept motions from 3D motion files. Uh, once you'd applied a 3D motion, it was also editable as a 3D motion. It wasn't flattened into a 2D motion in the way that G3 characters, when you apply a 3D motion to one of those and then apply it to the timeline, it's flattened into a 2D motion and you can't edit in edit it in 3D again whereas these characters uh, the motion would remain as a 3D motion and you could edit it in the timeline as a 3D motion. Now the reason why Reillusion dropped these characters is that they were extremely difficult to make from scratch and they were not easy to customize. Uh, you can't actually export one of these into a graphics editor as a full template you can import a template similar to the new G3 vector characters and we'll get into that a bit later and you can do sprite replacement on them if you wanted to do small edits. Generally they were so hard to make that most people didn't even try but we'll get into that a little bit more later and give you some pointers as to where to go if you do want to create these from scratch. But aside from that, these things are still available to buy in the marketplace and if you are interested in them, there are four really good packs in the content store. Uh, you can buy custom characters in the marketplace, but the content store has the four original Power Tools packs that were released when these came out. So that's these four here and these are actually in reverse order. That's the first Power Tools. And that gives you quite a lot of uh, custom components for doing mashups. This Power Tools was targeted at people doing infographics, so it's got a lot of characters specifically for doing like uh, educational videos, explainer videos, and those kinds of things. Uh, the real feather in the cap pack that you may want is this one. This is called the Buddy's World pack modeled on South Park so if you're into doing like South Park fan animations this is definitely the pack for you and then we've got this presenter pack which was again targeted at business and explainer videos and it had a few more things in there that would allow you to customize your characters a bit better so if you want to do G2 character mashups it's pretty much the same as G1 characters particularly because they're converted to G2 anyway and G3 characters. Uh, obviously just like those characters uh, you can only do mashups with G2 components. You can't mix and match like G1 and G3 heads with G2 characters and I'm just going to take my face off the screen. So here we are in the character composer 
and you'll see here that you've got this little compass thing up here for turning the character so you can see the different angles and you can also see the top angle and the bottom angle so we're looking at the character from under the feet so when you're editing these characters one thing you want to keep an eye on is that because they're multi-angle just editing one angle may not necessarily affect all the angles uh, particularly when you're working on the face I think this mainly counts for when you're moving bones around on the face so if I select this eye and so I just move it completely randomly over here you'll see if I go to the next angle the eye will be back in place on this angle but this angle it's where I put it so if I don't want if I want this change to happen on all the angles of the face just undo that I have to make sure I've got this box up here ticked which is angle linked and now if I make that change and go to the next angle you see that's been changed here and you won't see it there but next angle and there so that's just something to be aware of I'm gonna undo that and also when you're working on the face you've got this mirror option here that you can click so that now if I move this eye you'll see the other eye will move as well so if you want to make the same adjustments to both sides of the face just click that and you'll be right same with the angle linked if you if I turn this now see both eyes have been moved on this angle as well something else that we can do with G2 characters these were specifically designed to work with render styles that's this button here we open this up like the early version of color uh, management tool for G3 characters but all G2 characters have all of their colors divided up into these group names the group names are always the same and when you're customizing one of these characters from scratch you go through this process and put your colors into these group names but you can see here if I click this we've already got all of these presets here and with one click I can turn her into line art, grayscale, neon, and so on and so on. I won't go through all of them. And you can also have the outlines showing or not. And if you do have them showing, you can make them very thin or extremely fat. And the other thing you can do is you've got these color sliders to adjust the various colors. Uh, so if I want to change her skin color, in theory I've got to affect the same group selected so hopefully that will affect all of her skin colors so if I just go change the hue there you go you can see all the skin color changing on her there we could change her skin color like that so you've got all this available to you and you see all the group names here for the various things that you can change you just have to experiment with those if you're changing colors when you're customizing them so I'll leave that there I'll turn the bones off. When you're actually doing mashups, you can save out the heads and things. Uh, I think I've got a couple of body composer packs in here. So I want this one, G2 Power Tools 1. So you've got all the face icons here, eyebrows, different eyes, noses, uh, you've got the mouths and ears and what have you. And these things are pretty simple. You just sort of select what you want either click and drag or double click so let's say I wanted to give put this face on her there and we'd have to readjust the colors on her the easiest way to get to it might be just to reset everything so that they all match bodies like with these characters are divided into uppers and lowers so you've got if I wanted to change her into this shirt say you'll change all the upper half of her body or I can do this one and we've got the lower halves and all these different pants and what have you. So perhaps we do that. There we go. Or could we do that one? And of course, we got shoes as well. So maybe give us some more casual shoes or something. And as you can see, if I turn her around, that's the whole character. So we could change her hair. Go to this hair. There we go. So you can customize these characters. Pretty easy to do with all the component packs that you can buy. But you'll notice there's no way in here to actually export 
the full character template out into any kind of graphics editor. You do have this swift button up here, which is the button that you would use to import a complete custom template of your custom character. And well, the only other way you can customize these is through sprite replacement. So you can bring in a new, say, torso image through here. Uh, it will not accept SVG vector sprites, but if you can make SWF flash vector sprites, it'll accept those. So you can keep the vector nature of the character intact. That's the only real way you can customize these easily. And just like the G1 characters, you can use the actor proportions window on here. So if we want to turn her into say, a bit of a bobblehead kind of character, it's just one click. We can do that, stretchy character, or we can do more pear shaped, muscular. If that looks a bit too ridiculous, you can change the weighting of how much that affects things. You bring it down a bit if you don't want them quite that exaggerated. That's that. One thing that's interesting is that the G2 characters will accept a single angled morph based head. I can show you that with one of my own avatars that I've made as a G2 character. This particular character here, I'll load him in. So this head on this character is not a G2 head, it's a morph based head and it's also, I think, I believe it's got sprite eyebrows and I put sprite back hair on it so you'll see if I turn this character the head doesn't turn at all but the body will turn all the way around and you can see uh, I've customized it so that the back hair shows here but the glasses are still showing because uh, this is actually still the front of the head you can see I've just put this back hair in the way to block out that uh, but ordinarily these glasses would uh, disappear when I'm using this in my own animations. But I just wanted to show you that as well as G2 heads, you can actually put morph-based heads on these. And I did that just because uh, making an actual G2 head is very, very time-consuming because uh, if you've ever made a character head, you'll know you've got 10 separate sprites for each eye and something like 10 to 15 mouth sprites and with a G2 character uh, you have to do those 10 to 15 sprites of each face feature for every angle which is uh, one of the reasons why these are so complex to make and I'll put in this particular avatar of myself that is made entirely with G2 components and you can see that one So if you did want to create these from scratch, you had, back in the day, you had two options. There was the Draw Plus 7 Angle Template. Now, Draw Plus is a discontinued program uh, that you can't buy anymore. It was actually a precursor to Affinity Designer. But I will tell you from experience that the Draw Plus template was the hardest way to make these things. Uh, I had a, attempts at two characters using it and it, it was so complicated that I never managed to finish either of them and that's why you can't buy any G2 characters from my store that I've created because I never actually finished them. The other option you had was to use uh, Adobe Flash which is now Adobe Animate CC and if you just went with straight Flash that was also quite a difficult option. However, uh, one developer who is known as Toon, Toon Titan uh, created this particular app plugin for Flash called Puppet Producer and basically what it was is a plugin for Adobe Flash and I believe it does work with Adobe Animate CC and what it let you do was pretty much focus entirely on drawing your characters and you didn't have to think about file names, sprite names or making sure everything was in the right spot in the template uh, because the templates themselves were very strict on how you named the sprites and any little error could completely mess things up which, why, which is why they were a real nightmare to use. Uh, anyone who did develop their own G2 characters and got them for sale in the marketplace uh, generally used Puppet Producer to create them. 
it's still a lot of drawing. You've got to draw at least seven angles to get your full ten angled character because some of those angles you can just mirror across. But this took all the pain out of actually rigging the characters, which was the real hard part of the creation process. So I uh, definitely recommend getting this if you're serious about creating G2 characters. This and a copy of Adobe Animate CC and you should be right. And they are really good characters when they're designed well. Uh, you can do a lot with them that you can't do with G1 or G3 characters. So that's that. Now when it comes to animating these characters, that was the real point of difference. When I did the G1 character video, I mentioned the affected by 3D motion settings. That actually comes from these particular characters. So we'll just have a quick look at that. You'll see with G2 characters, this affected by 3D motion, all of these are ticked. So perspective is automatically turned on for these. The layer order of your sprites is automatically calculated when you pose them and the sprite replacement is automatically done as well. And because of this, these settings, uh, there's a specific order as to how you go about animating these characters. So what you want to do is apply all your 3D motions first and then you do this thing called flattening your 3D motions and then you apply any sort of layer changes and sprite replacement that you want to do after that so that these settings here won't overwrite uh, any changes that you want to make. So we'll just go through that briefly. I'm not going to show you completely how you animate these. If you know how to animate uh, G3 and G1 characters, you should be able to work this one out. But firstly, we've got 3D motions that work with these. So I'll go look in the timeline. Start. I think I'm going to look for a, just a proper 3D one. Here we go. We get one of these dance motions. Casual dance here. Yeah, this is a proper 3D motion. So we'll put that in and see what we get. There you go, you can see all the arms are adjusting, spinning around. And the perspective on the legs and the feet and the arms is working. There we go. Just move this up. All right. So if you wanted to make some modifications to that movement, so you can see all the perspective happening there. You get this arm behind, uh, foreshortening on that arm, and you'll see like when he's, you can see that this foot's getting bigger. That one's smaller. You can see, like, say his arm, I wanted to fix this where his arm's crossed over there. I could do that by going up from there. We open the 3D editor. And you can see in here we can edit this character in real time. And we've got things that we can move this view around just so that we can see what we're doing better. And rotate the view. And this is the camera here, which is what we're looking at here. And these two items here are the ones that actually um, affect the character. So if I want to move, actually move a limb, the selected limb, I can use that. And if I want to rotate the selected limbs, I use that. And you'll see if I use this angle thing, it actually affects the angle of the character. And you'll see just me doing that, put a keyframe in the angle track down the bottom. But I don't want to do that, so I'll take that off. And you'll see we've got keying modes. You can either keyframe the body part or you can keyframe the full body. Uh, often it's better to just do the full body unless you can really visualize what you're doing. And the pinning options, are, I believe, are for when you lock things like the feet and the hands. Uh, if you don't want feet to, say, move from a spot or if you don't want them to rotate when you're doing things. Uh, you've got a mirror option, so if you 
edit one arm, the other arm will mirror it. But anyway, yeah, if we wanted to change that arm, sort of fix the arm up, uh, we can put that there. Get rid of the 2D motion. So if we want to just put a key in there, then we'll go to the point just past where that arm is going into the side. So there, put a key in there, and then we'll go to the point where the arm is actually stuck in and looks pretty bad. And now we could move this arm out from that point a little bit. Now hopefully when we go through from this key to that key and then coming back to here and we fix that little glitch with the arm going in through the thing. And just like with any other character, you can split these tracks, like with G2, G1 and G3 characters, you can break tracks up. Uh, so if I break this track here, uh, you can see I can move that out there. You can see it'll stop for a second and then start dancing. Uh, you've got this little thing here that lets you blend between the two motions. Not that there needs much blending between those two because it's the same motion. So once you've finished editing all of your 3D motion, uh, you then need to, or it's advisable to go flatten your motion clip before you start doing things like sprite transformations and deforms and uh, switching sprites and changing the layer order uh, because of those because of the um, affected by 3D motion settings that I showed you earlier, flattening the 3D motion layer will sort of make this character now work a bit more like a 2D character. Originally this had the name of the motion here and now it's been labelled as a flattened 3D motion just so that you know that it has been flattened. And now we can do things like uh, changing the layer order. So I've got these legs here that are sitting in front of the jacket. We might want to try getting that and bringing that to the front. There we go. Those in front of that. And hopefully that should stay in the front from there onwards. I'm going to leave the animation at that. Uh, if you really want to learn how to animate these characters properly, uh, I'll link to a video that Reillusion brought out at the time they released these characters. It's a 20 minute video and it will run you through the entire process of animating G2 characters and what you need to know. But you can see they're pretty good, the way he's sort of easily adapting to these 3D motions and you're not really having to do anything. That is the main benefit anyway that they can accept full 3D motions and you can edit them as 3D motions even after you've applied them unlike G3 characters which can also accept 3D motions but once they're applied they're applied and you can't edit them as if they're 3D after that. So there you go, I hope you found this look into G2 legacy characters informative. Uh, they are still fully compatible with Cartoon Animator 5, uh, though as I said I don't think you'll probably be using them a whole lot, uh, simply because there's not a great deal of options when it comes to customising them and you have to really like the look of some of the G2 characters that came out with Cartoon Animator at the time of release. The only caveat I think in terms of whether you use them or not is if you are really into creating South Park fan animations then the Buddy's World characters are really ideal for that and they make it really fast and really quick to do those South Park type animations and those characters are extremely easy to do customizations on because they're such simple designs. And again, if you look in the marketplace, there's a lot of G2 stuff in there that you could add to your collection. Uh, a lot of the characters are vector-based.
vector based so they've got that resolution independence and they they're just quite good for that a lot of their props and that you could use with the new g3 vector based characters and you get all that resolution independence goodness there but otherwise i'm going to leave that there as i said hope you found it informative and i'll see you in the next one bye for now